Uh, my name is Rachel Klein, and I will be your presenter uh, for the next 20 minutes. Um, today we're going to be talking about attendance um, and some extra features that we have in the attendance section of membership. Um, some extra things other than just tracking who came. Uh, so the information for today's webinar is going to be from one of our workbooks. Um, it's going to be pages, let's see, 18 through 23 and it's workbook 203. Uh, you can find it out on the website if you'd like to. Uh, you can purchase it there if you'd like to have this information uh, print it, printed out for you to reference at any time. Uh, but we also record these webinars, uh, so you can always find our recorded webinars out on our website as well at www.churchwindows.com. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and go over a couple things about the GoToWebinar toolbar. Um, there is a place for you to ask questions. Uh, Josh is helping me out today to answer questions. So if you do come up with something you're curious about, uh, please feel free to type it into the question section on your GoToWebinar toolbar and either myself or Josh will get you a response. Um, I do ask that you keep your questions on topic. Um, if you have a question that's specific to your data or just a question you're curious about but doesn't have anything to do with attendance entry, um, I would ask that you shoot us an email with that question to support at churchwindows.com or call us on our support line and we can get you a better answer that way. Um, there's a lot more of you today than there is of us, so it would just be easier to get you the best answer that way. Alright, so as you can see, I have my church windows open. Um, I am using version 1916.2, which is our most current version. Uh, if you're seeing something older than that, you can always head out to our website um, and download uh, the update there as well. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and go into membership here. And then within membership, I'm going to click on attendance and I'm going to click on attendance entry. So you can uh, track attendance for events or you can track attendance for groups and classes. So I want to clarify real quick the difference between events and the difference between groups and classes. Um, events are going to be like worship services. So you would want to set up your any of your worship services as an event uh, here in church windows. So an event is going to be anything anyone in the church has the ability to attend. Okay. Um, now groups and classes are going to be a little different in that you have to assign people to those groups and classes and then the people that are assigned you track attendance for. So for a worship service, you don't want to have to go through and always add a new person to it anytime you put someone new into the program. So an event is going to look at everybody, and groups and classes are just going to focus on people that you've added to those specific groups and classes. Now we do have a nice button right here. I want to point this out. Um, this is going to allow you to quickly add a new event or a new group and class on the fly. So you hit the plus sign and you decide right here what you need to create. So do you need to create a new worship service? Maybe you're doing Lenten service that services that you want to track. You could make that as a new event. Or if you started a new small group or a new Sunday school class or something like that some type of Bible study, you can add it right here on the attendance entry screen, um, which is pretty handy. All right, so let me go ahead and choose a worship service. So I'm going to uncheck groups. So all I see in my Dropbox are my events, and I'm going to choose my Sunday AM worship service. Um, and then I'm going to pick a date. Now you can definitely click inside this box and type the date in of the Sunday that you need to track worship for. Um, or you can hit the little down arrow which is a great feature. Um, and the down arrow will show you uh, your Sundays and your Saturdays in red. And then any dates that you've already tracked attendance for are going to show up in green which is a nice little feature there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and choose the 26th. Now as soon as you pick that date, the lower section of the screen is going to appear um, with some more features for you to fill out. Now if you don't want to go through one by one and check um, everybody that is present, um, you can simply use this person's present feature right here and just put a grand total in. Um, you can also use this amount collected if you'd like to track how the money that was collected for offering that day as well. Those fields are not required, they're just some more features if you choose to use them. Alright, so let's look at this lower half. So tracking that people have attended, you would simply go down the list and check the present box. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but on page 18 in the workbook, it talks about tracking communion. Um, now this is um, a pretty handy feature. If you go over here on Nina's line and you put a check mark in her communion box, meaning she did commune that Sunday, it's automatically going to check her present box. Um, now another great feature about this screen is you can use your directional arrows. So you don't have to use your mouse at all. And with your directional arrows, click down to the people who came and then hit your space bar. And this allows you to quickly go through um, and check the people that did in fact commune. Okay. Now um, keep in mind as well, a lot of times you're going to have entire families come and entire families are going to commune or attend your church. Now if that's the case, you can check the entire family at once. So let me make this a little bigger. So if we're looking at the uh, Bernard family here, I can hover over the communion field, check the first individual in the family, and then hover over and do a right click. Then this allows me to go in and check communion for the entire family. And by checking that, now if we look at our Bernards here, everybody that's in the same family and membership now all has their boxes checked. So that's a nice little feature that makes um, entering your attendance a little quicker as well. Now I want to go up here to the top right and I want to show you uh, this options button. Uh, options is going to allow you to kind of go through this screen um, with a fine tooth comb and really adjust it uh, to the information that you're looking for with your church. So for example, we have some um, communion tracking options over here on the far left. Um, so let's say you don't track communion for your groups and classes. Um, so if you have Bible studies or Sunday schools, things like that, and you don't track attendance for them, you can remove this check mark and then that extra column that we saw on the previous screen, this communion column, this would then be hidden anytime you are entering attendance uh, for a group or class. So that's something to consider. Just makes the screen a little uh, neater. Less check boxes that you don't need to worry about. Uh, then you also have an option here for tracking excused um, absences. Um, this might not apply to you. You might not care to track if people have an excuse why would they were, uh, weren't there. Um, but if you have these boxes checked, then it's going to do the same thing back on that previous screen. Um, it would show or hide this excused column depending upon if you have it checked or not back in this options section. It's really up to you. Um, now below that section, uh, we also have a sort. So you have... Um, several options for how your people are sorted in the lower half of this attendance entry screen. Um, you can do last name, first name, which is strictly alphabetical. You can do uh, last name, family, and then first name. So if you see in the parentheses it says family members with the same last name will be grouped together. Or you can do family name, last name and then first name, which is all members of the same family are grouped together. So that's regardless of if their last names are the same or not. 
Um, now this is going to be saved for each user. So if you have different users, um, different logins for people that access uh, membership or that do attendance, that uh, person or each username can set up how they like the sort order to be when they are entering attendance. Couple more options over here um, on the left. You can show the address column if you wish. Sometimes this can be helpful if you have several people with the same name. Um, and then we also have this relabel fields up here at the top, which is really nice. Um, you don't have to use these specific names. These are just the common names um, that we believe or that we have used for um, different areas of our program. So say you call communion something else. Over here in this custom label side you can backspace out communion and call it whatever you like. Same thing with groups and classes. You can adjust those names uh, to be whatever names your church or your organization uses. Okay, so that's a nice little feature there too. All right, let me switch back to let me close this. Um, now I want to talk about here um, another feature that we have for groups and classes specifically. Um, groups and classes has an additional feature that allows you to track um, some extra information about those groups and classes. So let me come up here and switch to the example from the workbook, which is our third and fourth grade Sunday school. Um, as you see here, we are track tracking excused absences and communion for groups and classes. So those boxes were checked when we were in the options, and that's why we're seeing them here. But we also have an A, an F, and an S column. Now you might not have these, um, but these are fields that were set up when this specific group or class was set up. Um, now this allows you to track in the A column if this child participated well. It also allows you to track if they brought a friend um, and if they actually studied the lessons. So these are fields that can be uniquely set up for the specific group or class of additional information that you need to track. And that's done all right here on this attendance entry screen. It's not something you're required to use, but it's nice to have the option. Or say you want to track uh, who remembered to bring their Bible. You can make another field, call it B, and that would be for kids who brought their Bible. All right, next topic. I do want to point out um, something in this screen that can be um, uh, maybe a little unknown for people that start using this at first. Um, there is no save button on this screen. Um, so let me go through and check a couple people. So I've checked everybody. Everybody attended. Class was full. It was great. Um, now how do I save it? There actually is no save button, which is great. Uh, so as soon as you check or uncheck a box, the program is automatically updating and saving or remembering what you're picking. So once you get everybody checked that you need to, a couple things you can do. You can close out if you want. You can hit print and get a report. Um, or you can come up here and just change your date or change to a different event or group class. So it's really nice there's not that extra click of having a save button. So just keep in mind if you're done, close out, change to a different event, or if you need to keep entering attendance for your third and fourth graders, just hit the down arrow and switch to a different day. Okay, so now you see that the 26th is green because we just checked a bunch of kiddos, kids present for being there. All right, something else I'd like to point out down at the bottom here is your comments tab. Uh, comments tab uh, will print on reports. It'll print as a little summary down at the bottom. Um, but the comments tab is a great way to kind of keep track of why attendance was what it was, if you will. So general meeting notes. Um, this could be just comments about how the event went, um, if people were involved, if they seemed to be into the topic, things like that. Uh, lesson study. This could be uh, the, the Bible verse or the scripture that was used for the sermon that day. 
Um, or if it's a Bible study group, you could do the topic or the page numbers or the book that was covered. Um, and then also attendance facts or factors. This could be good if you have a low attendance one day. It could be because you were having a, a bad thunderstorm or snowstorm and attendance was really low. So these notes can be really helpful when you go print reports later to see why your numbers are what they are. All right, let me erase my drawings. I want to point out one more thing while we're in here as well um, about your date field. Another feature in here is you have this little dot, dot, dot button. This is really handy um, because it allows you to click and actually see all of the dates that attendance was entered for. So it shows 326. So that was the date I picked when I just went through and checked all these kids. Now if I go up here and I switch to my Sunday worship and I hit the little dot dot dot, these are all of the dates that have had attendance posted for them. Okay. Now you can also use the year plus or minus button to quickly jump back to previous years and see the attendance for past years as well. So the dot 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 button is a great way for you to come in and quickly see um, information for a particular event um, and even make changes as well. So if you find you forgot to check somebody or, or somebody was checked an accident that shouldn't have been, you can easily hit the dot dot dot, jump to a different date, and then go through and say remove the check marks for those people who actually weren't there. Um, another nice thing here, let me show you that too, another tip if you will, um, is up here under events, if you hit the down arrow, um, you can hit the code box and you can change how this screen's sorted. So if you want it sorted by code, you see the little arrow pops up, it's going to sort in alphabetical order by code. Now if you hit description, same thing, it's going to switch and, and change how it's sorted and it's going to sort alphabetically by the description instead of the code. So that's just another tip if you find that easier for looking for um, an event or a group or class, you can do that as well. All right, that covers um, the information I wanted to go over with you from uh, the workbook itself for today's webinar. Um, if you have any questions, please type them in. Uh, me and Josh are happy to get those answered for you. Uh, but if you got the information you were looking for and you don't have any questions, feel free to go ahead and leave. That's fine. All right, looks like a lot of you, oh, here's a question. Uh, Deb's asking which book. Let me pull it up here on the website for you real quick. We have some time here. So if you go out to churchwindows.com, under beginning, go to training workbooks. We're gonna scroll down here under membership. Where is it? I thought it was 203. I might have told you wrong at the beginning here. Let me find it. Here we go. Recording and reporting on attendance. Membership 202. So debits from M202 and the pages are specifically that I went over 18 through 23. And you can purchase these on our website. You can do a downloadable version. It's a PDF you can print out on your own. Um, or you can do a pre-printed. Um, and if you bundle them, they're cheaper as well. But the downloadable version is going to be $12. And then a pre-printed binder ready that we actually mail to you is going to be $22. You're welcome. 
All right, if, if you're typing, go ahead and hit send so I get it. If not, I'm going to go ahead and close out. All right, guys, um, I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned something that will help make your job a little bit easier. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks.